What's up, Notre Dame fans? Mike Singer, Patrick Engel, blueandgold.com with another little reaction video here talking about some Notre Dame coaching news. And on Monday night, uh, Bruce Feldman of The Athletic reports that Notre Dame picking up Indiana running backs coach DeLon McCullough. What do Notre Dame fans need to know about McCullough if this is their first time hearing about him? Yeah, I think this is a hire with a lot to like here for Notre Dame. Uh, McCullough coming from Indiana, like you said, where he just finished year one of stint two. He was there for, I believe it was uh, quick math, would be six seasons, 2011 through 2016, if that's right. Uh, and then going to USC in 2017, three years with the Kansas City Chiefs, 2018 to 20, won a Super Bowl there. All of those stints as a running backs coach. Also played running back in college at Miami, Ohio. Had a brief uh, pro career, uh, briefly with the Cincinnati Bengals for a little bit, and then got into coaching after he was uh, done with that. So really good track record of developing running backs here with you look at Indiana, a big part of turning Tevin Coleman into a day two pick. Uh, been in the league for a few years now. And then turning Jordan Howard uh, into a draft pick after taking him as a grad transfer from UAB. Coach Ronald Jones for a year at uh, at USC there, his last season before he became a day two pick uh, with the Chiefs. He was there for Clyde Edwards. He layers rookie year where I believe he rushed for a thousand yards. You can spot, spot check me on that. Not exactly uh, the highest running backs usage team that he worked with in, yet, in the NFL with the Chiefs. Uh, you know, we have some guy named Pat Mahomes playing quarterback, but always seem to have some guys at the, the ready there in the event of injuries and enough reliable running backs to have a complimentary rushing attack to Pat Mahomes there. And then certainly the, the Super Bowl experience, that kind of winning culture, uh, a good thing on the resume right there. He was with USC the last time USC went to a, a New Year's Six Bowl there in his one season. So uh, a lot to like, I think, about this with his pedigree, teaching running backs, uh, recruiting upside and who he's been able to land on the trail. And then uh, certainly the, the track record in, in being a sitting power five running backs coach, just you know when you're able to hire a guy for a job who's had that same job at another a couple of major college football programs. Uh, I think that's a good thing. It's certainly something you might've expected Notre Dame to target with this hire and it landed that kind of guy. Notre Dame fans, make sure you hit the thumbs up on this video just today and tomorrow, February 1st and 2nd to get our $1 a premium access deal plus um, receiving the free founders club hats. 10 per, if you are inducted into this Founders Club, and of course you can do that by signing up for a bloomandgold.com premium subscription here in the next 48 hours, uh, less than 48 hours, I should say, 10% of your lifetime subscription will go towards the Loose Emoji uh, Memorial Scholarship Fund. So dollar for a year premium access, free Founders Club hats, and 10% of your lifetime subscription going to support an amazing cause. Um, the uh, the GOAT of Notre Dame coverage's um, Memorial Scholarship Fund. So, Patrick, it seems like all media outlets, us included, are deeming this a home run hire for a lot of the reasons you just mentioned. Could Notre Dame have done much better here? I mean, thoughts on bringing up McCullough seems like a pretty darn good fit. I mean, if you had your sights set on Tony Alford, which I don't really ever think was realistic, then maybe you're disappointed, but again... Not really sure that was something that was ever really going to happen, even with Marcus Freeman's Ohio State connection and Alford being here. But when you look at the the rest of the guys who were out there, and McCullough was someone that I'd highlighted uh, in the initial look at potential candidates that I did when Lance Taylor left Notre Dame to be Louisville's offensive coordinator, I think it makes a lot of sense in terms of fit and why he wanted to go back to the college game uh, at Indiana from his stint with Chiefs trying to eventually be a, a college head coach is, is what it seems. And uh, I think this certainly helps both uh, team and individual here where looking where Notre Dame's last running backs coach went and where Notre Dame's running backs coach before him is Audrey Denson, now the head coach at FCS Charleston Southern. Tony Alford, yeah, potentially still on that track and maybe surprisingly didn't get considered at his alma mater, Colorado State. So I think from his perspective, trying to get to there, this move makes a lot of sense. And from Notre Dame's, I think it fits a lot of what Marcus Freeman uh, is looking for here with recruiting upside, uh, experience in being a position coach, and, and certainly adding uh, you know a, a good track record and some 
seasoned and, and been around a little bit on you know, an offensive staff that was on the younger side and an overall staff that was on the younger side, McCullough, uh, given that he's played this position and worked at this position, basically his most of his football career, uh, I think is a good thing for where Notre Dame's running backs can go. Yeah. Few quick things. One, Notre Dame having a running backs coach and a tight ends coach being promoted to offensive coordinators at other Power Five jobs, that's not normal. Um, typically, offensive coordinators, Patrick, you tell me if I'm wrong here. Typically, offensive coordinators are quarterbacks coaches. I, I feel like it's got to be more than a 50% rate there. So, and I know McNulty has a quarterback's background, so maybe kind of maybe he doesn't count there, but. Um, it's it's definitely like a good stepping stone for McCullough. Like he's not going to be a Notre Dame lifer. If he's here for two years, I think that's a, that's a win for Notre Dame because he is, um, uh, oh, like we talked about, he's a renowned coach. A couple things. Really well known football family. He's got four sons. One was born in 2016, so you know he's. Uh, we're not going to be talking about him and recruiting for a little while. But Deland Jr., uh, rising senior defensive back at Indiana. Um, Desan just enrolled at, uh, Indiana, of course, Indiana's where, um, Deland senior was just coaching Desan six foot five, 228 pound edge, number two prospect from Indiana, uh, number 89 player in the country in the 2022 class per the on three consensus was originally Ohio state commit and Notre Dame was recruiting him. Does he take advantage of a one-time transfer rule and, and follow pops to Notre Dame? Like we'll see. Day McCullough, four-star cornerback in the 2023 class per on three consensus, committed to Indiana. So, like, some interesting little notes there. Do some of these McCullough brothers go to Notre Dame? Like, something to kind of keep an eye on in the coming weeks and months at bloomandgold.com. And then another thing, Patrick, is um, McCullough's background and finding his biological father. Um, If you haven't read that, if you're watching this video and you haven't read that story or I'm sure there's a documentary on YouTube that you can find. I listened to it a couple years ago in podcast form on ESPN. Incredible. Blow your mind. You'll instantly become a fan favorite of McCullough. So, um, Patrick, unless you want to comment on any of those McCullough notes, we'll move on to what's left um, out there for Notre Dame um, in this, um, hopefully, this um, you know coaching search for assistance is going to finally end here pretty soon. Yeah. De- just to touch on what you mentioned with the, the offensive coordinators. Yeah. Definitely rare for a couple guys in one year from Notre Dame to have gotten that promotion uh, in the same off season. And it feels like anecdotally, at least a lot of these guys are, are QB coaches, but at least in John McNulty's case, kind of coached everywhere. He was yeah. a QB's coach with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for a while. Lance Taylor had a receivers coach background as well. So Kind of a a mix and match for those guys. But, yeah, a a, a sign of the good staff Notre Dame had. uh, It got two guys promoted to Power 5 offensive coordinator jobs in in one offseason. Yeah. So just left is defensive coordinator. Seems like Al Golden is the favorite to land it, if you were to put odds on it. And then tight ends coach um, in in that opening. Obviously just came open um, in, in the past couple of days here. So, Patrick had a really good article um, looking at p- potential candidates for the tight ends job. You mentioned in our last video we did uh, Brewster, um, who had spent time at, at Florida, Florida State. Tim, Tim Brewster, I believe, uh, seems like a really interesting candidate. So Patrick lays out um, those guys, including another coach from Indiana. Could Notre Dame steal another um, from uh, the, the, uh, the Hoosier State program? So keep an eye on that. Blueandgold.com, dollar for one year of premium access. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will catch you guys next time.